Cause at that time when I wrote that song, I was like living with my mama and I had just got back from college, didn't, didn't get a degree. And I was just basically a dropout and I was just sleeping on her couch and I was just like ready to like, move on for the next chapter in my life. And like somebody told me like that song made them move out their mama crib. And I'm like, wow, like I was in the same predicament. And I'm just like, I was so touched to know that, you know, that that song made, like motivated them to like get out the situation that they was in. And if I could hear more of that, or just knowing, like I don't even have to hear it, like just knowing that I touch one person with my music is all I, all I need to keep going. All right, welcome back to another episode of Conversations with Jay. I have another special guest in the building. I'm going to allow her to introduce herself. Hello, my name is Jaina G. I'm a singer-songwriter from the South South Chicago. And I've been singing and writing songs for about three years professionally now. And I just dropped an album called Love Jane. It's out everywhere, and that's pretty much me right there. All right, well, where on the South Side did you grow up? I grew up like, I grew up like, Everywhere, but the main the main neighborhood was uh, 69th and Winchester. Okay, so over there by uh, Western. Mm-hmm. Okay, what was it like growing up over there? Um, it was cool. Like back in the day, every everything was like oh I ain't gonna say safe, but it was like safe enough to like go outside and play with your friends and stuff. Not like how it is today, but it was cool. Yeah, it's sad that, that well, I'm a parent myself, you uh -huh. feel me? And I know we used to be outside from sun up to sundown. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, maybe I'm an overprotective parent, but I can't see me sending my kids outside and they just go off and just doing anything they yeah. want. Because we was outside doing whatever we want. Whatever, to do. yeah. And nobody, I ain't going to say we ain't had nobody overseeing us, but when we was outside, we was outside. Mm -hmm. So what would you say is some things you learned from growing up over there? Um, some things I learned is that, um, that's a good question. What did I learn going on? I learned the value of friendship. Uh, I learned, I learned to be generous, you know, not always being like, not trusting everybody. Like I was just too trusting over there, but I learned just to, you know, give people the benefit of doubt rather than just judging them. From first impressions being being over trusting and being generous like how do you balance that how do you balance um i'm still trying to figure that out myself right now because as a kid growing up i was like overly like generous and like just trying to make somebody else you know smile or have a better day or whatever but like as i got older i just realized people like took that for granted so now it's like who can I really like be myself to? Is it is it tough for you to open up to new people? Cause I would assume that it is. Um, not not so much. I think it's I think it's more so like putting more effort into like having a relationship with them. But I'm pretty much open to people. Not like you know some personal stuff, but I'm I'm friendly or whatever. Have you ever, have you ever, has that, how many times has that come back to bite you in, in Chicago? Because I know sometimes people will take advantage of a kind person, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So have you ever been taken advantage of as, as just being kind and generous? For sure. Definitely when I was in like middle school, I was always like so generous to like money at the time because it was just, it came like, it wasn't mad. So I was getting it from my parents or whatever, but I always like gave it to my friends whenever they needed or whatever. But over time, it just like I had another friend that made me like realize like, yo, you can't be doing this to like everybody because they gonna keep asking, they gonna keep taking, taking, taking from you. I'm like, as I got older, I realized that you know she was right, and now it's just like I pick and choose who you know who deserve my love for real, for real. But even though like sometimes I would like be genuine to a person just because it's still me. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like at the end of the day. My intentions are good, rather you take advantage of it or not. Facts. I, don't, I I I think that's that's beautiful because a lot of times we go through negative situations and we allow those situations to change yep. who we are as a person, like to a core. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So to know that you you've stayed you, like that's pretty dope. Yeah. So at what age did you start making music, or did you fall in love with music? I fell in I fell in love with music back when I was like nine years old, so like in third grade. Back when my dad had like a whole little DJ system, 
I don't know why, but he was, both of my parents are like believers. So we would always have like parties for like my grandma's birthday or one of our birthdays, and we would have like the whole little DJ set up or whatever. But I fell in love with music when I heard Fantasia with the truth is and the free yourself. I don't know, her voice just really stood out to me. And like ever since then, I've been trying to like practice my singing or whatever. But, um, you know, when you be like recording yourself and you singing, you hear it back, and it's like, this can't be me singing. You think like you sounded so good. But over time, I felt like I didn't have the confidence to like really come out and tell people, I, like, yeah, I'm a singer or whatever. I would tell people, like, I could hold a note or two, but the confidence building was definitely a journey because it took me years to like really step in my glove. And that was like three years ago. So now I'm just like, Tell people like, yeah, I could sing. I got music out, you know what I'm saying? And even as an artist, like with my voice, I'm still like improving. Yeah. So yeah. Fantasia is one of those artists I don't I, I feel like doesn't get talked about as far as like voice. Oh I'm, I'm bad. I'm so sorry. You good. As far as like voice, cause it's like, how can somebody sing so well mm -hmm. that damn near bring you to tears? You know what I'm saying? Like for me, singers have a different place in the world um, aside from rappers. Like, when somebody's singing a song, like, my homie just got um, married last weekend, and his wife walked down to the aisle to John Legend. Mm -hmm. Ordinary people, bro. Classic. And I'm sitting there, like, we going through wedding rehearsal and all that. I'm like, bro, somebody in here gonna start crying. Because mm -hmm. it's like John Legend was in there with us. He sung that song so beautiful, you know yep. what I'm saying? So... I would say, do you have any songs that you listen to? You'd be like, man, I killed that. Um, oh, like a man? Uh-huh. Um, I want to say uh, my song called Yours for Life. Uh, that's on my first album called On My Magic. I feel like that's the song. I was like, yeah, I killed that songwriting and, like, vocals as well. Even, like, still to this day, I feel like I could have sung it better. But at that time, like, I killed that shit. Like, um, I'm sorry, can we cut something? Nah, you good. Okay. <laughs> okay, but yeah, that's the one song that I feel like, I uh, like, yeah, I did that. I think other people would say, Can We Imagine, also on that album, just because like, I feel like they could really relate to that song. But when I hear it, I just be like, ah, I could have sang that line better. Or, you know, just fix it a little bit. Now, you say you stepped in your glow three years ago. Do mm -hmm. you remember the exact moment or the song that you was like, okay, I'm here? Yeah, it was my first song that I ever recorded. It's called Winning, Winning Season. I got, like, a lot of good feedback from it, and I didn't expect so much, like, love from it or whatnot. But when I was in the studio and I, like, came out the booth to, like, hear it, and my producer, like, right now, even from back then, I'm still fucking with him. But when he, like, mixed it and all that, I'm like, damn, like, this shit is really me. Like, this is, this is the beginning of something amazing right now. Like, what, do you, what do you like more? Do you, like... The recording process or actually getting out in front of the people and being able to perform those songs? Um, recording it. Because there's so much that goes behind, like, singing songs. Because there's, like, harmonies and background vocals that really makes a song, like, popping and what you, what you would, like, assume that it's on the radio. You know what I'm saying? Like, most singers, they will, like, come in and just, you know, lay down the main vocals and this thing, like... Yo, this is it. And they wonder, like, why it don't sound like the songs that's on the radio. This is right. just a whole lot of producing and mixing that goes into it. So recording is a, is better. Well, be, it's a better feeling for me than actually singing live. You know, a lot of people think a lot of things are easy until they actually see the process yep. of somebody actually walking them through and making a song or, or anything in this world. Like, we, from the outside looking in, I think we take a lot of things and people for it. We take it for granted, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And I feel like Chicago has some of the most dopest R&B singers in the world. Yes. And to me, they don't get the, the proper shine and recognition mm -hmm. because it's like, Nowadays, you got rappers harmonizing, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So, it's like you rarely hear R&B on the radio. Yeah. Like, how do you feel about that? Um, that was a good, that's a good point to bring up because, like, even on, like, Twitter, they talk about it, like, is R&B still alive type shit. And it's a, it's a good, it's a really good topic to even, like, talk about because, like you said, R&B artist is not really giving their, giving credit right now, and, um, giving their credit right now, and, um, People not really looking for it either. I think that's another problem. And, um, like, it's just a whole lot of rapping and all that stuff. It's just how could we, like, come out? How could we stand out from, like, rapping? Because yeah. rapping is, like, really at its most top tier right now. 
Yeah, that's, that's it, it's difficult because, like I say, you got rappers, they harmonize, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? And it's, 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 I would say, killing our ears to, to what real music is. It's yep. like, okay, y'all, I ain't got nothing against rappers harmonizing, let them do their thing. Yeah, for sure. But like you say, when it comes to vocals and actually like making the hair stand up on your arm, mm-hmm. like we need singers for that. You yep. know what I'm saying? I don't think there's a rapper that can. You know what I'm saying? Embody what a singer is, mm-hmm. you know? And I feel like somehow we need to push that back to the forefront. Like, it's, it should be genres. It seems like rappers are able to jump genres effortlessly. And like you say, a lot of people feel like R&B is dead just because it's so hard to find. Yep. But it's great R&B music it's, out Yeah, there. it's so much out there. It, they just underground that's really what it is they're underground and that that itself like they really need to push themselves as well i know i need to like be on my promoting game like harder go as hard as these rappers are going because man but you know it's a whole lot that goes into like the really perfecting your vocals and all that stuff especially if like you, you your biggest critic and whatnot and with the confidence building as well but i think it's the promotion as well promoting your music and all that stuff and getting your name out there. Does it ever discourage you to like drop songs? And like you say, you have people that, that give you great feedback. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, that feedback isn't turning into money, I would say. Right. So does that, does that kind of like make you say, Ugh, I don't know if I really want to do this? Why? Cause, uh, cause it ain't much money. That, that's like nah. Just because it, it takes time to, to build. You know what I'm saying? Any type of career. Mm-hmm. You know, but you got people nowadays that utilize TikTok and they blow up off of one yeah. song. So, I yeah, I definitely find it hard, especially right now. Well, honestly, it's all the progress. Like you said, it's it's it takes a long time for it to, especially in the music industry. Like it's it's really hard. But I'm definitely trying to get blown up on TikTok. I'm trying to, like, you know, your presence on social media right now is definitely imperative to have. Even though, like, people be definitely, I'm one of them people, like, people definitely want to have, like, a detox from social media. Because after a while, you just, your brain is fried from just watching a whole lot of nonsense. But um, as long as your timeline is good of, like, what you really want to learn from, because I know my timeline, I try to keep it, like, about singing and songwriting and um, just new music is in, in a whole just to know, like, what's out there, what I'm com- what I'm competing with. So, social media, it, it's hard. <laughs> How much new music do you find from social media? I find a lot. I'm one of those people that will put you on to some new people. Uh, I be, uh, I definitely... I'm trying to put my producer on like new stuff just so he could like hear what's out there or whatever. But I definitely listen to a whole lot of underground R&B artists. Being a singer, how often do you like just play with your sound or experiment with your sound? Um, in the beginning, I'll say like two years ago, even now. But two years ago, I was really trying to like play around with my voice to see like what's how comfortable. Just to fan my voice. Like, how comfortable am I am with, am I, my bad. <laughs> I'm just, like, tongue twisting. But how comfortable I am with the voice that I have. Because I think when I first got into the studio, like, the booth or whatever, I was, like, trying to sound like Beyonce, trying to sound like Jasmine Sullivan. And then, like, listening back, it's just like, okay, I'm not sounding like these people. What's happening? You know what I'm saying? So it just came to me. Like, I had to realize, like, I got to, like, Build, find my voice, build my voice. Like what, what, what stands out from other singers, and like really go with that. So still, I still try to like figure out how I could tweak my voice here and there on a beat or whatever. Because I sometimes rap too, so I like to like jump genres as well. Just because that's what it is now. I feel like if you're not versatile, you're not really gonna stand out. So I uh, uh, I had a producer that I interviewed this morning. His name was the letter L beats. Uh-huh. And he spoke on that doing everything that you possibly could do as far as music mm-hmm. goes, because you never know when a time calls for you to be that person that you need to be. Yep. You might not have direct access to this person or that person. Sometimes you got to step into those shoes. Mm-hmm. How important was it for you to, to find that um, producer and lock in with that producer? Um, well, I definitely didn't want to just like jump into any t- any recording studio, um, just cause I just didn't want my 
experience, experience with like making music be bad for like the first impression. But I was working at a nursing home, and um, I don't know how, but my coworker of mine just asked me like, Jana, do you do you like sing or rap or whatever? Do you want to like be on my song?" And I was just like, "How do you know that?" So. He, he brought me to a studio out in Gary. Uh, it's called Rebellious Star Music Recording Studio. Shout out to Awesome the producer. Um, I went out there in 2019. I uh, hopped on my coworker song. And I was like, at that time, <laughs> I was rapping like really hard. And that, that day just made me realize like I'm not that type of rapper. Like I'm somebody that's singing rap rather than like hardcore rap. But I like the studio, I like the setup or whatever. The the quality of the track was really good. So I'm like, yo, I gotta come back and see how it is for like my music. Like see how it just I, I feel like I was ready. So ever since then, like when I heard Winter Season, I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to nobody else. Like this dude, he's gonna help me find my voice. Explain like how you created the your name, your artist name. Like, Jana G, um, that's basically like a Chicago thing. Because, you know, we all call each other like G's. What up, G? In school, people be like, what up, Jana G? Like, what's going on? Like, all that stuff. And I'm like, I low-key like the sound of that. And, like, my best friend, Dad, he always called me like, Jana G, what's going on? And I'm just like, yeah, I'm going to stick to that. So yeah. I, it's just been with me since middle school. So, so it's a nickname that, that just stuck. Yep. Shout out to the nicknames out here. Because yes. I, I tell people, you can't create your own nickname. Like, I try to create my own nickname. It just yeah. don't work, you know? <laughs> people, it got to be something that, that people just call you by and then sometimes it just randomly stick. You yeah. Know what I'm saying? So shout out, to, shout out to your nickname being mm-hmm. created. Yep. Shout out to Chicago. That's just, that's just really show, like, the culture of Chicago in my name. So I think that's cool. You know, a lot of people talk about how much hate it is in Chicago. Mm-hmm. So tell me why you love Chicago. I love Chicago because we know how to have a good time. Oh no. <laughs> we we um I think it's that. It's really that. We know how to have a good time. We know how to mm. I love Chicago because the food, <laughs> Facts. the bond that we have with each other just in general, like, yeah, sometimes it could be, you know, violence or whatever. But at the end of the day, I feel like I'm most comfortable in Chicago. And that, it's so ironic to say because, you know, the rep, the reputation that Chicago has on other cities is just like, I feel comfortable when I'm at home. You know what I'm saying? At a party sometimes. It depends on what time it is. Yeah, so, <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's the reason why I love Chicago because it's... I grew up here, my home. Man, Chicago gets such a bad rap. Yeah. Like you say, because of the violence, but at the same time, we have we have major artists that get on and then they get on major platforms and all they do is talk about the negative that comes with Chicago. Yeah. I don't feel like we have enough people talking about the positive that come with Chicago. Mm-hmm. Like you can literally be in Chicago and need help from a stranger and they'll help you. No yeah. problem. You know what I'm saying? I, I feel like Chicago is a loving city. It's just, you know, sometimes you just don't like another person. In. Yeah. It's not, nothing you can do about yeah, that. Yeah, it just be like that. Sometimes it's not even like beef. It's just like, I'm going to just keep my distance, you know. But, um, yeah, that's all I really got to say. Uh, with the music thing, definitely uh, in Chicago, there's a whole lot of creativity uh, with artists not even just like singing, but like poetry and painting and all that stuff. It's just so much that goes, so much creativity in Chicago. And I, I love it. It's always something to do. It's always someone to go. It's always someone to, to support. Thanks. So, yeah. What are some of the goals you have as far as like the music go? Um, well, one goal for this year for me was um, to get as much visuals I could do for my music because I don't really have much music, which I just released uh, a music video for one of my songs on Love Jane. It's called Beautiful Disaster. Um, just released a music video for that, and I like it. I love it. Um, and I got I got another uh, music video that's in the work right now, too, but that's one of my goals, definitely like getting a whole lot of visuals and um, performing as well, which I've done a lot, of, a lot of that last year. So, like, that's just... Me as an artist now, it became a, life, a lifestyle. So, let's talk love, Jane. Love like, Jane. Well, why, why love Jane, and what all went into the creating of this project? Um, love Jane. The title is just basically like me 
just writing a letter or just me writing my diary and I'm just ending it with like love, Jane. I thought it was cute. I gave myself that nickname when I was in college, <laughs> when I was in college and nobody called me that. I think except for one person calls me that. They call me like Jane Jane or whatever. But I thought I thought it was a very cute name or whatever. But um that album is basically it showcased my love journey and um the experience with love right now that I'm like manifesting the love that I'm receiving and the love that I would like to, you know, give out, basically. That's really what it is. Is it difficult to be, like, vulnerable through your music? Um, Sometimes, yeah, it's a little, it's a little, um, I want to say I'm a bit shy when it comes to that. But I think there's one or two songs that's, like, my most vulnerable uh, song. And it just, like, it just, flow, it just flew, flow out of me when I was writing it. And, um... Yeah, I try to like, I challenge myself to just speak my mind, like put my feelings into my songs, like for real, for real, other than just like, you know, just testing my songwriting skills. So, yeah. Do you feel like you putting like you into your music, do you think it helps other people connect with it more because it's coming from a real place? I, I hope so. That is, that's that's one of the goals as well. Especially from like my first uh, album called uh, Owning My Magic. Basically, like the title itself is just me just owning who I am as a as an artist and just uh, stepping into my glow. And a couple songs on there was very vulnerable. And a lot of people relate to them. And I, which I found that su surprising in a way, but it was just like, it felt good to know that other people, you know, feel the same way about certain things is in life, so. Let me ask you this. How difficult is it to be a black woman in America? How difficult? I would say it's kind of scary. Like, when I first learned about, like, black women in hospitals and, like, when they're giving birth, like, they don't really, the doctors don't really, like, hear you out and don't, like, listen to your feelings or, like, know what's best for you. They just see you as, like, a test animal and they just you know do what they think is right rather than just hearing you out like if you're in pain or whatnot but um like just walking around as a black woman um I never experienced anything like what I read on the internet about like the organ trafficking or whatnot or just yeah. kidnapping or whatever but um I definitely read a lot about it but it just makes me scared I never like really like experienced it let me ask you this. How can can black men help black women feel safer? Um, that's a good question. I read a lot of stuff uh, on that topic, uh, that conversation on Twitter. Um, I would say just be just be like they're like we are already self advocating ourselves. Like we speak our mind. But just to have like an ally to help advocate us about whatever situation we're going through, I think that's that's number one of a uh, option of for men, black men to support black women. You keep speaking on Twitter. Is Twitter <laughs> your favorite plat social media platform? Um, no, it's not. I don't think so. Like I just go on there just to see, you know, what's what's the people talk about, you know, and I just get go down the rabbit hole with just conversation yeah, and topics. Yeah, but I don't think Twitter's my favorite social media because I get on there like once every probably like once a week maybe Damn. but I definitely try to like uh because like I said you know social media is definitely a, a, a aspect when you're an artist so I just try to like tweet here and there or whatever but I just be reading a whole lot <laughs> are you big on social media I try to be I'm one of those people that want to stay away from social media and just read books and I stay understand. to myself. But as an artist, you know, I got to, like, be out there and just have a uh, really just showcase my personality. And I think that'll help people relate to my music as well. So what would you say is some of your favorite books that you've read? Um, hmm. One of my favorite books. Right now I'm reading Think and Grow Rich. It, it's good right now, but. I like fiction books that kind of like take away, take me away from like reality and just like mm -hmm. experience something else. But one of my favorite books is um, The Evolution of Mara Dyer. I think that's like a sci-fi type of book. 
Um, I read that twice. That's how good it was. Yes. Uh, if it was a movie, man, I, I, I hope it would be good, but I would definitely read that like all the time. But that's one of them. Another book is called... Um, it was it was such a ghetto book. I don't know why I read it. I forgot, but it had me stressing. Um, it's something <laughs> like diary of a. I forgot what it was called. Why had you stressing? Cause she was just making some dumb decisions. Oh, okay, like, okay, yeah. <laughs> I forgot the name of the book, but yeah. It's like watching one of those movies, motherfucker, running from the the murder and they yeah. keep tripping, like, bro, what the fuck is you doing? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and especially like when those uh those. Romantic love comedy movies too, and they just like do make stupid decisions on like going back to their ex when they're with this new guy that's treating them like they're Fantastic. like, yeah, like what's the point? But yeah, it was so ghetto though. Yeah, <laughs> well, um, this is my favorite question if you can go back and give your younger self any advice, what would it be? Um, that is a good question. I would. Tell myself to always, like, stay true to myself. Don't let, like, other people speak fair into my dreams. Go after whatever that I want to go after. Every, anything is possible uh, as long as you, you know, stay consistent and motivate yourself and just uh, stick it through. Basically, and always be like a lifelong learner. So just reading books and like sometimes reading on Twitter, you learn a lot as well. So um, and um, basic and more um, like give the knowledge to other people as well. And I think like uh, with my music, that's something I feel like it's a purpose for me in life, just to give my gift out to other people. So yeah, that's the advice I would give myself. All those things should be things that should be taught in school. Yeah. Number one, staying consistent. To me, that's the hardest thing to do in life is For to sure. stay consistent. Because today, you might not be feeling like doing anything. Tomorrow, you might not feel like doing anything mm -hmm. either. Wednesday, you might feel like quitting. Like, man, fuck this. But what I learned is just doing one thing every day that, that goes towards your career or your passion is a right uh, step in the right direction yep. because like we we overlook the the smallest things trying to make it big mm -hmm. you know and we look at like you say social media social media make it look like everybody a millionaire mm -hmm. everybody giving advice on social media all you need is a hundred thousand views on one clip and all of a sudden now you like a guru you know right. what I'm saying so I think just doing small things to to brighten up your own day especially if it goes towards your business or like I say your your personal brand mm -hmm. is something that that will help people stay consistent yep. and like you say reading a lot of people don't read much you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. I, I find myself reading a lot whether it's a tweet whether it's, it's a post on social media whether it's a book, whether it's an ebook, you know, mm -hmm. information is out there for a reason. Yep. To be, to be taken in and used. A lot of us hoard information and we don't use it in the mm -hmm. right way. So, and then you said to um to give your gift out. You know, like being a singer, a lot of people are going through some tough times, and you never know how your voice helped them get through it. Yep. You know what I'm saying? That's some. Some like Whitney Houston. I, I'm gonna sit here and I, I ain't gonna act like I'm the biggest Whitney Houston fan, mm -hmm. but that's one of the most beautiful voices ever in the world. Facts, you know what I'm yeah. Saying? And her music has helped a lot of people just get through whatever they were going through. Yeah. So I hope your music has that same effect on people, and I hope people start to come forward and tell you that they that your music has touched them in a, in a certain type of way. Because mm -hmm. I'm not an artist, I never made a song, but I know how. So it's how uh, a random person telling you, hey, man, I fuck with that shit. That shit yeah. helped me through this can just take you to the next level. Yeah. That reminded me of, uh, I think it was like the third song that I had like ever recorded. It was it was a very vulnerable song. It's called like By Myself. It's basically the concept of the song is like I like chilling by myself. And I was just really talking to myself like I owe myself a lot. And um, just owning my flaws and stuff. And I had somebody tell me like, um, cause at that time when I wrote that song, I was like living my mama and I had just got back from college, didn't, didn't get a degree. And I was just basically a dropout and I was just sleeping on her couch and I was just like ready to like 
move on for the next chapter in my life. And like somebody told me like that song made them move out their mama crib. And I'm like, wow, like I was in the same predicament. And I'm just like, I was so touched to know that, you know, that that song made like motivated them to like get out the situation that they was in. And if I could hear more of that, or just knowing, like I don't even have to hear it, like just knowing that I touch one person with my music is all I all I need to keep going. Yeah, that's life changing. Yeah. When you you can literally say, Man, damn, I touched another person in a peaceful, calm yep. and productive way. Like a lot of people don't get a chance to experience that in life mm -hmm. at all. So salute to you. Uh before we get out of here, you got any message or anything you wanna say to the people? Um Stay true to yourself, you know, uh, chase whatever dream you got because anything is possible. Uh, listen to my to my new album that I just dropped called Love Jane. It's out everywhere on Apple Music, Spotify, Tidal, wherever you listen to music at. Um, follow me on IG at janeng.music. You can subscribe to my channel on YouTube, uh, janeng. I do a whole lot of like music vlogs on there. Just like I actually just started a series called Behind the Mic. So basically, you see like what really goes down when creating like the music I record or whatever. And I'm trying to like stay consistent with that because I low key been lacking. But definitely uh, subscribe to that on there because I've been dropping music videos as well. And there's gonna be more visuals coming. And um, yeah, I got a whole lot of performances uh, happening this summer. So follow me on IG and stay tuned for that. Drop your IG so they can follow you real quick. Jane and G dot music. J A N A. Put it on there anyway. Yep. J A N A G H E E dot music. Man, salute to you and everything that you got going on. Thank you. I can like you just got an aura. You know what I'm saying? Like a happy ass aura. Yeah. And when you walked in the room, like even the colors you wear, like you right. know what I'm saying? It's <laughs> like damn, man, she's just a happy person. Mm -hmm. So uh, salute to you and everything you got going on. Once again, I hope you never stop grinding. You know, yeah. never stop grinding because it's a uh, it's a um, picture I seen on IG. Dude, he was digging for the diamonds and he was right there and he stopped. Mm -hmm. and the other dude kept digging and got the diamonds. So you never know when that that moment is gonna come in life. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And like I say, I hope people start to reach out to you more because a lot of times when those people do reach out to us, it be on those lowest days. It be on those days where we needed that. For we real. needed that little extra push. Yep. So hopefully everybody that watched this interview is touched in a special way. Yeah. And I they go so. listen to your music. Yes. So once again, I appreciate you. Thank, Thank you for you. coming through. Yeah. I just had a listening party too not too long ago and it just made me like, you know, this summer it just kicked off the summer what I got planned or whatnot. Mm -hmm. So I had a whole lot of people, you know, show up for me and support me and it just I'm growing right now. <laughs> That's really what it is. So Shout yeah. out everybody that showed you yeah, support shout because out to that goes man. a long way. Yep. So once again, I appreciate you for coming through. Thank you once again. Yeah. This has been another episode of Conversations with Jay.